Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Um, this video is about me porting these Pro Comp small block Ford heads. The noise in the background is the mill running. It makes me money. YouTube doesn't, so you're going to have to deal with the noise. Um, this is video is pretty much to prove I'm not going to be a Superman because these heads are going to be tough to do. And what I mean by that is what I did was I'd already floated them. You can go back and look at the video to start with. But the distance underneath the seats, because there's an overhang, which I don't even know if the camera's going to capture it well. Let's get a little light here. Let's not get a light. There we go. You can see how that seat, there you go. See how the seat overhangs the bowl? That's not good for flow at all. So these have a 202 intake valve. And um, if I just did a valve job, it's not going to fix that. So what I did is I used these. And I measured underneath where that seat was. To see what the distance was and then figure out what valve might be able to get a decent throat in there and get rid of that lip 208's about it the seat itself's wide enough so the material itself is wide enough for me to cut up to a 209 um i think it's actually 210 is what it measures but anyway i'm going to cut out with a 208 intake valve i'm going to stick with a 45 but let me show you so this is your device that we use to cut and you got your cutter blades but when I set it down here, this setup right, when I set down, it's going to hit this entire chamber. So it's going to open the chamber wall up that whole way. But more importantly, over here on the spark plug, so I'm going to put it right there, get my light again. It doesn't work. And you can see we are pretty close to that spark plug boss. Now, don't get too worried. LSs are actually closer. And this is the only way that can, I really can manage that. So this being the first step, we're going to cut this valve job and try to fix a bad situation and prove I'm not a Superman. Here's what it looks like after the valve job's done. And the chambers are kind of not the best. As you can tell, it got really did get close to that spark plug there. Like I said, not too much to worry about because LSs are about that way anyway. However, if you just left it like this, it would suck for flow. Because I know the camera's not really capturing it, but you see that ledge? The ledge is huge. So you'd probably have to be at like 300,000 lift. So the valve would have to be in this area before you got out of that ridge there. And even then, it still keeps hitting that ledge hard. So the first thing to do was to address that. So let me show you. I got one chamber done. Let me turn on the other light here. There you go. Now you can see it split it out and rounded that. And it's into that too. And then on this side, which the head's dirty because I'm grinding on it, so deal with it, I guess. Um, there as well. So it's better, but this is, this is gonna be rough. So there's one of the first things to be done. Um, you might be saying, well, didn't you increase the chambers? So let's go back to this one. Chances are really likely that the chambers did increase. So as far as size, because of the grinding for sure. Because there's quite a bit of metal end up being removed to make that work. We can mill those back. And I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Because if you look here. See how much of a ledge it is. The top cut's really in this range. So I can mill probably probably around 20 thousandths down. Which would be almost 3 cc's. I don't think I'm taking out 3 cc's to get it right. However. We still have other issues. And remember that this is the reason why I'm not a superman. There's things you just grinding can't fix because you can't you can't take away what's not there this being it so the valve job's in and this right through here as you could tell if the camera would just focus yeah right back through here there's no metal so this is going to be horrible uh i'm gonna have to make my throat a different shape than i usually do just to compensate for that um and also probably bigger than what i usually would do from this application but it's a uh, case you're wondering, isn't that a horrible idea? Yes, but you're trying to balance the evils. So throat too big, bad idea. Um, however, that to me seems like it's going to be worse. So we're going to just do what we can and uh, it is what it is type of thing. So that part's the next part that I'm going to grind on the head that's in the porting room that you saw the chambers done. So and I still haven't even dealt with that issue. Yeah, those are push rod slots. That's my next problem I'm going to have today, I can already tell you. Um, this wall is usually straight, but there's a slot here. I 
hate this. And why? Because let's say I make that straight. I have no idea how close this is to that slot there. And you're like, why don't you use your sonic checker? I do have one. And the problem is, is how consistent is it? So I might check fine here and then not be fine here. So then you end up with one port that's bigger than the others. Um, also, if, and this is the bigger one, if this breaks through, so most likely I'm just going to be, it is what it is type of thing. I'll make it as good as I feel comfortable with and stop because if I break through to fix it, it's going to be a pain in the rear, especially this one. So on a small block Chevy and stuff, usually they're open and they're exposed. So you can get down with the welding torch and boom and fix that, weld it up properly. And this one, being that the water core is right here too, um, you can't really grind that out to get the welding in there. So you'd have to weld from this side, then somehow grind on this side. And not ideal. So that sucks. So I'm not, I, well, I don't know. It sucks. Usually they're straight. Um, and I'm afraid if I make it straight, I'm just going to break through. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do about that. This seems like a bad situation getting worse. So if you're grinding on that, you're like, oh, that's fine. You never know. And then it's really tough to fix. And some of you might be like, well, just put sleeves. There's tubes in here. That's an oval, not a round shape. So that would be very difficult to accomplish as well to get it to actually. You're sure, you can put them in. Doesn't mean it's going to seal. So and you're like, well, epoxy. Epoxy comes out. Especially on this Chinese aluminum head, I'm not sure if this aluminum would even attach right to the epoxy and not flex and move more than what it should. So, here we go. I'll let you know on the next part with the throat and then somehow today figure out that part too. Anyway, back to it. Okay, ignore the mess, but I'm going to try to show you uh, what's been done. And I'm going to weigh just about everything on this because it feels like I'm trying to turn this piece of um, poo into something spectacular so but I don't know that it's gonna happen so let me show you because I actually finished porting this head so and I know I probably should have reported through the whole prior, entire process but I was really trying to get stuff done so let me show you so I've already talked about the chamber but on this what you could tell is you know the throats were kind of here and I know the lighting's not well but um what I end up doing is I opened them up to 91.5%, which is actually pretty big. And the only reason for that is because I was trying to get as much of that ridge out. And really, it, the ridge is worse on this cylinder, and it got better as it went this way. So this one wasn't so bad, so it had the better radius. But they all end up at 91.5%. On the bowl itself, which would be the distance from here or going straight across the drive, is 98%. Um, you might say, well, that seems awfully big. Uh, the reason for that is because I wanted at least some kind of interior to go into this. So when you make the throat bigger, you probably should make the bowl a little bit bigger too. Um, so that's what it's been done there. Now, here's a, since it's on this part of the view of the head, I'll show you the bigger part of the exhaust. So the exhaust like this, let me just flip this head so you can see what I'm talking about. The exhaust as it comes, you can see this nasty ledge right here. So the valve job's redone, but you, it slams right in this. It's a really horrible deal. So... Um, this being the ported one, you can see now it has been knocked down. I didn't just round that. It. It's actually sticking out this way. So I've actually moved it down and over, as you can tell here. So now it's like, it should be a normal short side for exhaust. Kind of raised up still, but you get the idea. Um, and there you can see more of the transition from there. So um, then we have this part, as you can tell here, uh, not looking great. You know, it's got the, the bulges. And this is what I came up with. And honestly, I probably just wasn't bold enough because I just don't want to break through on this. I, I just don't. So as you can tell, it's still there. You can see it. Dramatically knocked down. But I'm just scared to death it's going to break through. And then I'll be like, oh, crap, I got to weld it. Because not only that, besides me machining this out so that I can get the welding torch in there, this aluminum's crap. So it's, it's, it's not good to weld. So I was being a little conservative, but there you go. So it's still there, just not near as bad. And on this corner, which would be the push rod slot, I mean, both are the more rounded one. This one, I just rounded that over. That's why this one looks really nice. And this one, you can still see the bulge and this wall should be straight. It's just not because I'm, I'm not that brave. So, and then the short side, it's actually short already. So there was no laying back of the short side. So. 
On some heads, you would do that, but on this, it's pretty flat, which means there's not a lot of short side height. So if I look from the apex here to the deck, it's really short, so I didn't lay that back. Did widen it a little bit because the bowl got bigger. So on this side, um, the bowl itself, because I made it larger, it moved that, usually the top part gets moved over, so move the bottom part over. So that's pretty much it. So widen the bowl, not dropping the short side. And that's pretty much it. On the exhaust, I've showed you pretty much what I've done was, was just simply knocking that out. I pushed this wall over a little bit, not gigantic. And the biggest thing is this all the way around because it still has that ledge here. That's it, and that's what they look like. Um, sorry, the lighting's not good. Again, I'm actually really late at night and I still have to get some work done on this head. But um, anyway, that's what's been done. If you have questions, you're like, I wish you would explain it more in the video. I understand. Put them in the comments and when I get time, I'll answer them. Because I don't mind giving up any information about this head at all. Because I hope to not port another set of Speedmaster um, Ford heads again. At least this version. Um, yeah, I just I hope to avoid that period. So, I don't mind sharing anything. So, if there's something you want to ask, go ahead. I don't know, have a clue how good they're going to be. I remember I floated them before, and they were pretty bad. So, it can only get better. So, we'll see what they do. I'll flow them hopefully here soon. Um, and I'll attach it to this video. So, because I don't really have a clue what they flow. It, to me, it, I did the best what I can with what it's here without trying to get too brave with it. I guess if I had another one that it wasn't worried about ruining, I would see how much room I had here. And if it was enough, I would uh, move it straight like it should be and see how much material was there. But I, the thing is you can have core shift and then I'll end up regretting it. So I wish I had one here, another one just to see. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to flow it and I'll share the results with you. Okay, before I show you the flow numbers, I have to say I was quite shocked. Um, really. I didn't think it was going to turn out like this, and, well, it is a little shocking. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So here we are. Here's our flow numbers. This cylinder one is stock, so this is exactly how I floated with the 202 valve. This is it ported. And I'll go through some of the numbers because they're pretty... Some of them are very outstanding considering how much it gained. Um... In some spots, not as much as I'd hoped. So let's get started. If you look, the numbers I care most about are four, six, and peak. If I look at four, it went from 210, which is just miserable, to 225. And that's still not that great. At 400 numbers, even with the bigger valve and everything, it's still not outstanding. And that has a lot to do with the chamber design itself. Um, that part just kind of sucks. By the way, this was floated on a 430 bore. I'm sure if I floated on a 4155, it'd do better, but this isn't what it's going on. Then I look at six, though. It went from 254 to 287, or 288. That's a huge, huge, huge jump. Like, very big jump there. And if you look at peak flow, the best it did before was 264. Now it's doing 314. Um, really, from 600 on... It's as good or better than many of the um, aftermarket heads that are out there, which is saying something. Um, the 400 number, not so much. I really wish it was like in at least 240s, but it's just not there. is isn't going to happen largely due to that chamber design, having that spark plug right in its way. But once the valve's out of that section, then it starts really moving air. But most shocking to me was actually the exhaust side. If you look before, it only did 153 CFM. That sucked. Um, at four, that's 181. Really, that's a good number. Don't care which head you have. And peak flow of 231. Um, that's outstanding. These exhaust ports really do move with quite a bit of air now. There are several other Ford heads that I know of that are even come CNC ported that don't do 230. Um, that's quite outstanding. So, overall, um, the head is much better than what it was before. Judging by the flow numbers and how much has been gained quite a bit, it's a huge improvement over what it was. Um, and it will probably compete with many of the heads that are out there currently. If we had these on the dyno, they would be very, very close to some of the heads. Uh, not all of them, obviously. It's not going to compete with the Trick Flow 240 High Port um, or the AFR 220s. 
but it does hold its own on to get some of the other heads. So pleasantly surprised, um, but I still hope to never port another one. Anyway, um, at least this Speedmaster head. Anyway, if you have any questions or things you'd like to see or have any information you want to know about this, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Please like, subscribe, and all that junk just really because I want the channel to grow and uh, hopefully someday I can make some more money so I can do more cool projects for you guys to see. Anyway, uh, guys, remember I'm no Superman and you guys take care.